Good. So thank you, Anna, for the introduction. And I would just like to start by thanking the organizers and uh, the uh, the staff of at IPAM for the invitation and for the organization of this of this workshop. So I know it's a lot of work uh, organizing a workshop in normal times, uh, and then it's even more probably the case in this uh, in these circumstances. But I think it's very important that we stick together as uh, as a community, even during this time. Uh, I will report in this talk about the joint work with uh, Gennaro Ciampa. So he was a former PhD and uh, for a short time a postdoc of mine, uh, now at the University of Padova in Italy, and Stefano Spirito from, from L'Aquila. And I will try, uh, since uh, I realize that the audience in this, in this workshop is pretty, uh, pretty diverse in a certain sense in terms of expertise, so for more applied to more theoretical, I will try not to give the, say, last detail of the proof, but more to focus on, say, concept and background techniques uh, for, this, uh, for this type of question. So as said, it's about a strong convergence for the uh, vorticity for 2D Euler equations in the implicit limit. So let me start by, uh, say, describing the, the equations. So we study the uh, 2D Euler equation in vorticity form, which reads in the following way. So the T omega plus uh, u dot uh, the gradient uh, of omega equals to zero when I fix some initial datum. So omega at initial time at equals to zero is some given uh, omega zero. So omega is the vorticity and the velocity u is related to omega by uh, the so-called Biot-Savart law. So u is going to be uh, k star star omega. So we study as said the implicit limit So we want to understand, uh, which is also, you know, you can also call it the vanishing viscosity limit. Um, that is, we want to understand the property of this solution to be the limit as a uh, new converges to zero of uh, the so-called Navier-Stokes equation, which again, I've written vorticity form. So the T uh, nu, um, um, omega nu plus uh, nu dot, uh, gradient uh, omega nu equals to nu Laplacian of omega nu, which is again our vorticity, in which I also prescribe some initial condition, so nu uh, omega nu at initial time, which in principle I will allow to be dependent on the, uh, on the viscosity, which I fix in my problem. And again, I have the same link between velocity and uh, uh, vorticity, again expressed via the uh, Biot-Savart law. I said, this, so the goal, would be to uh, understand the convergence of the uh, solutions to the Navier-Stokes with vorticity uh, with uh, with viscosity nu to the vorticity uh, so, so to, to the solution of the Euler equation in vorticity form as nu converges to zero. Okay, as we go to the uh, to this vanishing viscosity limit. And we do this in two dimensions. So these equations are uh, set in two dimensions. We work alternatively on R2 or on the torus. So there are some technical differences between these two, these two cases. I will not focus a lot on those differences. So some existing results. So concerning the uh, Euler equations, so some results are probably well known, at least to a part of this of this audience. So you have the existence uh, and uniqueness globally in time of smooth solutions. And this is a rather old result uh, due to uh, Liechtenstein uh, uh, Volibner. But I will focus more on the case in which the vorticity or the velocity is not regular and we only have some integrability assumptions on the, on the vorticity. So basically concerning the case of an initial datum omega zero, which is in some L1 cap LP class. So the existence was shown for P larger than one in a series of works by uh, the Pern and Maida. And in the case P equal to one by um, Vecchio and Vu. While uh, we also have existence in the case of a measure so uh, a measure, a positive measure in H minus one, lock, positive measure, and this is due uh, to the locked. So these are just existence results, uh, while for the uniqueness, so it's basically known only for the case of uh, a bounded solution. So uniqueness for bounded solutions.
and this is uh, due to Udovich. Okay, so let me tell you what is the basic a priori estimate, which is in a sense the key of many, uh, for many of these results. So it's a basic uh, a priori estimate for the vorticity. And this is some connection with the renormalization theory for uh, continuity and transport equations on which I will focus in a while. So if we consider the function bit of z given by uh, z to the p, we can take our equation in vorticity form, multiply at least and do some formal computation, the Navier-Stokes equation in vorticity form times beta prime of, of omega. And then we get the following equation. Okay, so the following equality, the T of beta of omega nu plus u nu dot gradient of beta of omega nu. At the right hand side, we would get nu times the Laplacian of omega times beta prime, beta prime of nu which we can rewrite in the following form as nu times the Laplacian of beta of omega nu minus beta second of omega nu times the gradient omega nu squared. And due to the convexity of beta, we get the following estimate. And this basically provides an estimate uh, which is uniform in time in LP for our solution. Okay, so from this, we conclude the following, that omega nu belongs to L infinity in time, LP in space uh, uniformly. And say, at least in the case in which we have elliptic regularity, so for P larger than one, we also get an estimate on the velocity, which will turn out to be uniform in time, W1P lock um, uniformly in the viscosity. So being uniform in the viscosity, this implies that these estimates at least formally hold also for uh, the case of the Euler, the Euler equation. From this estimate, we can get some, uh, say the first, uh, say soft result about vanishing viscosity for this type of problem. So up to subsequences, We have the following. So we have weak convergence for the vorticity and strong convergence for the velocity. So omega nu will converge weakly to some function omega. So weakly in L infinity LP for the P that we are considering. And u nu will converge strongly to some velocity in L infinity L P star minus locally. So well, P star is the Sobolev, uh, the Sobolev conjugate uh, of P. So this is a weak uh, convergence, um, so a result for weak convergence of the, of the vorticity. And in particular, we can deduce a weak convergence to a solution to the limit equation. So in particular, weak convergence to a solution of Euler provided we can pass to the limit in the nonlinearity that is in the product. Provided we can pass to the limit in the product of the velocity times the viscosity, okay, at least in some weak sense, which holds uh, in the case the two exponents in which I have the weak and the strong convergence are at least holder conjugated. provided one over P plus one over P star is smaller than one, which is equivalent to uh, P greater than four over three, which is a sort of recurring exponent in this, uh, in this theory. So this is a result of weak convergence, which is kind of simple coming from soft, say weak compactness results. What we want to understand is the possible upgrade to a strong compactness, uniform in time, and we also want to go to uh, up to the index p equal to one. So goal, we want to understand the strong convergence of omega nu to omega in uh, say continuous in time LP strong, uh, strong in space. This for every p between one and infinity where omega should be a suitable so suitably defined solution of the Euler equation. I will come to this 
in a while, I hope. So there is a huge literature on this. Okay, so I will not cite all the works, but for solutions with some degree of smoothness, so this goes back to some works by Constantine um, Smoody and Constantine and Wu. With bounded vorticity, there were some recent results by uh, Constantine Driva Selgindi, which also inspired our, you know, our, our ana analysis. So they were able to show that for bounded, so in the class of bounded vorticities, you can prove strong convergence um, uh, in, uh, so maybe I, I state this result. So Constantine Driva Selgindi. So for vorticities, so for the vorticities omega in L infinity, they could show convergence omega to nu to omega in C L Q for every Q less than infinity. So strong convergence uniformly in time. And uh, there was also a follow-up of this work by Christian Seitz, in which uh, um, uh, he, um, he could uh, refine, uh, refine this rate of convergence. And in the case of LP vorticities for P larger than one, so in parallel to our work, uh, there has been a work by Elena nussens uh Christian Seiss and Emil Wiedemann. Again, in the case of vorticities uh, belonging to uh, LP uniformly in time, they could prove strong convergence uh, in LP to the uh, to the solution uh, to the solution to the Euler equation. So let me maybe you know, as I said, I don't want to give the most uh, uh, the most precise results and proofs. So let me focus a bit on uh, on the techniques. So this p greater or equal than four over three appears above for this vanishing viscosity results, it's also quite important in order to understand what is the notion of solution to the, uh, to the Euler equation. So remarks around renormalization. So basically, in order to define weak solutions for the uh, to the Euler equation in vorticity form in distributional sense, what you need is to give a distributional meaning uh, to the product of the velocity times the vorticity, and that's the computation that we did above. So for p greater or equal than four over three, solutions can define can be defined distributionally. Something which is very important is to find, in a certain sense, a not just formal but effective uh, version of this conservation which I was describing before. And this holds for all solutions, and this uh, is uh, exactly this uh, renormalization, uh, this, this type of renormalization results inside the dipernal Lyons theory, if p is greater or equal than 2. So if p is at least 2, you can prove that solutions um, of the Euler equations of the Euler equation in L infinity LP satisfy so are such that uh, for suitable nonlinearities uh, beta also beta of omega is a solution so the T of beta of omega plus u dot gradient beta omega equals to zero for beta suitable uh, nonlinearities. And this is the so-called uh, renormalization or is a byproduct of the uh, renormalization theory. Theory by uh, Di Perna and Lyons. So it is not known whether solutions are uh, in general are in general uh, renormalized if you go below p equal to two. So what is known on the other hand is that vanishing viscosity solutions are renormalized, and this holds uh, well now in the full range. So vanishing viscosity solution are indeed renormalized. renormalized. So in a certain sense, the property of being a vanishing viscosity solution gives better properties, so better qualitative, quantitative properties to, to solutions, okay? And this has been obtained in a series of works, so by 
myself in collaboration first with Stefano Spirito for the case B strictly larger than one, and then also with Camilla Nobili and uh, uh, Christian Zeiss uh, for the case B equal to one, which is a bit more complicated, you know, um, due to some harmonic analysis, harmonic analysis issues. So this is more or less the setting, and you also understand that this property here, so the renormalization is very important because it provides on the one hand a priori estimates, on the other hand, because it also provides a definition of solution uh, of the Euler equations in the case uh, P is so low that we cannot give a distributional meaning to, to the solution. So now I am a bit maybe short in time, but let me try uh, to, to give a flavor of, uh, of how you can prove these results about, uh, uh, about the vanishing viscosity limit. So basically there are two possible approaches. So one is more an Eulerian approach. So two possible approaches. So one is more at the level of the PDE, Eulerian approach. And this is also very close to what uh, uh, Elena, Christian, and Emil were doing. So close to Nussensweig, uh, Nussensweig Lopez, uh, Seiss, uh, Wiedemann. And the other one uh, is uh, an approach which also has some stochastic flavor. So it's a sort of stochastic Lagrangian approach. Okay, so let me maybe give uh, to you an idea of what is in a certain sense, the backbone of the proof uh, in the case of the uh, Eulerian approach. So the basic tool is basically uh, a linear de Bernoulli-Ohm's lemma. So, um, so basic tool is um, a linear de Bernoulli-Ohm lemma which is essentially based on the renormalization property. And then, okay, we work at the uh, linear level, so I slightly change my notation. So if I have a sequence of vector fields, uh, B nu, which uh, converge to a vector field B in the dependent Leon class, uh, that is say uh, with some uniform Sobolev estimates uh, for what concerns the regularity with respect to the space variable. And then we also have a sequence of initial data which converge, so uh, rho zero nu converges to rho zero, both uh, strongly in L1 and uh, weakly star in uh, L infinity. I can consider the solutions of the PDE with initial datum rho zero nu and vector field uh, B. Then what I can deduce uh, is that uh, I don't just have weak convergence uh, rho nu to rho, I also have strong convergence uh, and this for every Q, which is between one and uh, infinity. Of course, you have to take away infinity. So the idea for that uh, is the following. So if I may give a sketch of a proof. So I have my equation in the limit. So the uh, couple rho B rho will satisfy this equation here. I know from the Dipernalion's theory that this is also um, a, renormalized, uh, a renormalized solution. So I have fixed Q before. So I also have to, that rho to the Q is a solution to the same equation. And then I have basically two weak compactness results. So I have the weak compactness of rho nu, which will converge to due to the strong convergence of the vector field, the weakly to rho. So rho nu will converge weakly to rho. But on the other hand, by uniqueness for the limit equation, I also have that rho nu to the Q will converge weakly to uh, rho to the Q. Oops, to rho to the Q. And then by combining um, the um, weak convergence um, of the function and of a nonlinear function of the function, I obtain the strong compactness. So this is the basic, uh, the basic result, uh, which, uh, uh, which uh, implies then uh, the strong convergence uh, in the, inside this Eulerian, Eulerian context. How much time do we still have, Anna, more or less? Uh, I'm just wondering whether, and I think you're muted, sorry. Yeah, we started uh, about two or three minutes late. So I would say about five minutes, maybe. Okay, 
So maybe I just give, uh, thank you, one of the statements. So uh, we have in fact two different results. So uh, maybe let me state uh, uh, the first about quantitative strong convergence for the vorticity. So I said that the second type of approach is more of a stochastic Lagrangian approach. So let me call just now Lagrangian for brevity. And this type of, so the PDE approach, uh, so is in a sense quite, quite simple and relies on, uh, you know, this well-established dependent Lyons theory. The small disadvantage of it uh, is that it does not really provide a quantification in the rate of convergence. So uh, the second approach that we, oh, let me mention that also uh, about this, this more PDE approach. So this was also used by, uh, by Christian, Elena and, uh, and Emil, of course. So the uh, ODE or the Lagrangian approach can provide the following quantitative strong convergence of the vorticity result. Over the vorticity. And then I will state in the following form. So fix, uh, and now let's look for simplicity to the case P strictly larger than one. So there are extensions to the case P equal to one. And assume that I have a sequence of say smooth initial vorticities which converge to our initial vorticity in LP strong at the initial time. And assume that we select a sequence along which we have weak convergence for the, um, velocity and uh, um, you know, along which I have weak convergence for the velocity L infinity mm -hmm. L to weak star along the subsequence. Then uh, along the sequence, uh, we get strong convergence of the vorticity in C LP strong. And it also comes with an estimate. Which I can state in the following form. Every time I fix a delta, so I find some constant which will depend on this delta and on the initial vorticity as a function. So that's one of the small drawbacks of this result. So not just via norms. So that's positive constant, such that I have the following estimate. So uniformly in time, I say that I am on a bounded interval of time. So the difference between the two vorticities, so the vorticity in Navier-Stokes and the vorticity in Euler in LP is controlled by delta plus uh, this constant, which I identified here, divided by the following quantity. So the log of the maximum between the square root of the viscosity and the difference between the two velocity fields in L1. So a strong norm of the difference between the two velocity fields. And since I'm also moving in principle the initial datum, I have also a term which remembers, which remembers that. So plus omega zero nu minus omega zero in LP. And I think I have no time to uh, say a lot about the proof, but basically, so let me just state what are the key tools. So the key tool in the proof is a sort of stochastic version of uh, uh, the uh, so-called quantitative estimates for ordinary differential equations in, uh, so with sobola vector fields, which uh, you know, was derived a few, almost 10 years ago, uh, together with Camillo de Lellis. So quantitative estimates. for these um, with some other vector field. So basically you rely on Lagrangian formulations for both problems. So a standard Lagrangian formulation in the context of uh, uh, Sobole vector fields for the Euler equation and the stochastic one in the context of the, uh, so for solution of the Navier-Stokes equations. And then basically you try to estimate some sort of say logarithmic difference. So logarithmic integral difference between the two flows. So you argue at the level of the flows. And then you utilize the fact that the PD solutions, so the PD solution of these equations are expressed by composition with uh, 
between the initial datum with the uh, ODE flow or with the SDE flow for what concerns uh, the uh, Dinavier Stokes equation. And then you perform uh, also using the ETHOS formula when you have uh, time derivatives of, uh, of these uh, logarithm quantities. So you derive suitable estimates, and I know they are a little bit vague. And uh, by these quantitative estimates, uh, and by using some optimization on the parameters at the end of the argument, you can prove the uh, the estimate which I which I was mentioning here in my in my statement, which I have to remark is not completely closed because it still relies on the difference between the two velocities, which which you can work, but only in the context of L infinity uh, L infinity vorticities. So if the vorticity is, is in L infinity, you can prove an additional estimate, which you Again, you can prove this uh, by you know by several arguments, uh, but in which you re-estimate the difference between the velocities uh, in terms of the other quantities in your problem, and then you give a fully closed quantitative uh, estimate, uh, which is based on uh, uh, the modulus of continuity in L1 for the initial for the initial vorticity. And uh, sorry that it was maybe a couple of minutes over time, uh, and uh, it was not uh, fully detailed as I said, but I'm very open to discussions in the uh, breakout rooms later.